everyone to the IVF weekly series live stream, but actually starting today, it's going to be an IVF daily series live stream. Of course, together still with Dr. Dr. Oybek, first of all, of course, this is the IVF cycle planning down regulation regime topic for today. And welcome everybody to today's IVF series daily live stream featuring Dr. Oybek Rostomov, a member of the Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists of the United Kingdom 2007 and has completed subspecialty training in reproductive medicine and surgery at Cambridge University Hospital's NHS Foundation Trust. Dr. Oybek holds a postgraduate research degree from the University of Manchester and has extensive scientific expertise in the evaluation of ovarian reserve and ovarian stimulation in IVF cycles. For today, Dr. Oybeck will cover IVF cycle planning, down regulation regime. And with that, also a disclaimer notice to everybody as well as, you know, there are different types of patients who has different results and for more accurate diagnosis on your concerns, you may refer and consult with your respective GPs or physicians. So without further ado, let's welcome right now, Dr. Oybeck Rostomov. Good afternoon, Doc. Uh, good afternoon. Thanks, Jesse, for a kind introduction. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining the live stream. So, uh, sorry, we had a couple of weeks of break. Now we're resuming daily live streams. So now we are starting um, uh, the cycle planning stage. Uh, so in this stage, we have got six steps, uh, which are down regulation, ovarian stimulation, fertilization, embryo transfer, and the single embryo to biodiversity, double embryo transfer, and additional interventions planning. So I think this is the most important st stage of IVF because in this stage, uh, we actually review the couple's individual history. On the basis of this, we have to make a very robust plan uh, for the couple and predict their cycle progression and, and possible problems they may have in the cycle and put plans in place um, to mitigate these this, uh, challenges during IVF cycle. So, um, okay, so this is the first step in cycle, um, cycle planning, so which is um, uh, down regulation regime. So what we will do is we will quickly review the IVF cycle to, uh, to understand why uh, we actually need a down regulation. Then we analyze, so what actually down regulation uh, means, and uh, then how we achieve this down regulation, what drugs use, we use for that, uh, and then at, um, at the end of the presentation, we will discuss how we decide which down regulation regime um, we, we use um, in IVF cycles and how we decide uh, which one to use for each patient. So, okay, so uh, let us say we did a baseline workup in the, uh, for the couple, then couple uh, signed all the consent forms and they're ready to start IVF cycle and we will wait until they decide which cycle they will um, start IVF with. So this is the preceding menstrual cycle before actual IVF cycle. Then IVF cycle starts uh, typically from the, uh, the, the beginning of the menstrual period. Um, so they, they do blood tests when they have a, a menstrual period and inform the clinic. So then, um, then they get instruction to start injections to stimulate the ovaries. So um, this period lasts approximately 10, 12 days. So for ovarian stimulation, we use the FSH drug. So FSH is a follicle stimulating hormone, which is normally produced from pituitary gland in low um, uh, um, amount, but in IVF, we give much higher amount to stimulate the ovaries to get um, optimal number of eggs. So then at the end of the stimulation, which is at the end of 10 to 12 days, uh, typically we will give a trigger shot, which is LH hormone to, um, to attain maturation of the eggs in the in the in the follicles, so um, so then we will bring patients for egg pickup after 36 hours after the, after the trigger. So um, normally, what happens in menstrual cycle is during this uh, first phase or follicular phase of the of um, of the cycle, because of increasing uh, levels of ovarian ho uh, hormones like estradiol um, um, uh, inhibit. So the, the pituitary uh, releases LH hormone. So if you can see here, LH and FSH is low at the beginning of menstrual cycle. In the middle of menstrual cycle, LH goes up. So this is actually the trigger. It's exactly the same thing as our trigger shot, LH. So the role of this hormone is to um, achieve maturation of the eggs, then ovulation after 36 hours after, after the peaking. So... Um, 
So in, even in IVF cycle, if you don't block the pituitary gland from uh, producing LH hormone, um, the patients can ovulate uh, during the stimulation. So um, they can ovulate any time once follicle becomes um, large and dominant. So this is why we have to block this uh, function of pituitary to take over the process. So artificially, we take over the, uh, the regulation of reproductive function. From previous uh, pr presentation, as, as you remember, the role of pituitary is a regulation. Role of ovary is a production. So we'll have to stop the regulation because we are regulating as um, specialists in clinics in IVF cycles. We don't want your pituitary to, to regulate. So this is why um, we have to down-regulate. Down-regulate means just stop its regulation. Uh, so this is why we call a down-regulation regime. So uh, let us look at how we actually achieve that, how we can down-regulate pituitary, so which, which is working all the time. So pituitary, in terms of FSH and LH production in cyclical manner, it starts from the time uh, women have a first period at, at the age of 13, 14, and it never stops um, until menopause. After menopause, it stays, uh, the hormone level stays high. So how we can actually stop the process during IVF cycle, during stimulation of 12 days? So um, this can be achieved in two different ways. One is called agonist and other one is called antagonist. So let us look at uh, closely how, um, sorry, I actually, I need to, yeah, I need to share full screen. Sorry, I just go back to the same slide. So if you look at this slide um, closely, so let us look at how this uh, pituitary function itself is regulated. So pituitary is, is located on the base of the brain. Um, uh, so, and it should, which is connected to the area of the brain called hypothalamus. So the hypothalamus releases hormone called gonadotropin releasing hormone. As its name says, the job of this hormone is to make pituitary to release gonadotropins. So FSH and LH are gonadotropins. So, um, yeah, so we can, we need to, um, we can do it in, uh, we can block the function of pituitary in two different ways, as we said. One way is giving agonist drug. So agonist gives a go signal. So which means that when uh, patients use agonist drug, they, it gives a go signal to the pituitary and uh, require, uh, request pituitary to release gonadotropins. So we said we want to stop it. Why we want it to release now? The purpose of this is to make sure that pituitary releases all uh, stored FSH and LH and, and empties um, um, its storage. So pituitary is like tank. It contains, keeps FSH and LH hormone and storage. When us, we give a go signal, these agonist drugs, it dumps all the FSH and LH into bloodstream and becomes empty. So when the, the storage tank is empty. That means that during the stimulation, pituitary cannot release new hormone. So um, yeah, the second way, another way of doing it is is giving antagonists. So the role of antagonists is the complete opposite to agonists. And what antagonists does is it stops pituitary from releasing um, FSH and LH. So how it does is uh, how it achieves is that so antagonist drug binds to the receptors um, of the pituitary which uh, senses gonadotropin releasing hormone so occupies those receptors and um, and this why when hypothalamus re produce uh, gonadotropin releasing hormone pituitary cannot recognize it there's a lot of fsh and lh in the storage but uh, pituitary cannot release so we have two different ways of uh, <coughs> blocking pituitary one is agonist and second one is antagonist so uh, now let us examine um, how we use these drugs in IVF cycles. So um, essentially, by and large, uh, the, uh, this is pituitary down regulation regimes. By and large, there are three different regimes. There are a lot of different variations of um, each regime, but by and large, we use um, two different regimes using two different drugs. So antagonists, and then two other different type of agonists. So in antagonist, um, so what happens is the patient um, starts menstrual period and starts um, stimulation drug. So um, then 
after four or five days of stimulation drug, we are an antagonist drug. So because initially first four or five days, uh, risk of increased if, um, LH and FSH, LH and FSH is low um, because and it, the follicles should reach certain size, normally about 14 millimeter size, and should produce certain amount of estradiol and inhibin before um, pituitary becomes active. So first four days, generally it's safe not to give antagonists. So then you can start antagon antagonists to block the, the function of pituitary. So okay, so for first four or five days, we don't give any antagonists. We keep giving stimulation drug, FSH drug, then us um, uh, as LH starts increasing, we, we, we give um, antagonist drug. So, um, and there are two different variations in antagonist injection. One is called fixed, which means in all patients you start on certain day, day four or day five. Then second one is variable. In the variable, you need to do scan and blood test to, to check if, um, if there is a, a risk of increase of LH, and if it is, then, then, then you start. So essentially, days of starting antagonists may change and variable um, uh, regime of antagonists. So uh, in terms of drugs, that the, the number of different drugs can be used in antagonist cycle, when most common ones are citratide and orgagotron. So and now we move to long agonist cycle in um, in agon. As its name says, it uses agonist drug and it's long cycle. Long cycle means it's longer than typical antagonist cycle. So as we said, antagonist cycle starts after menstrual period. From the second day, patients start a stimulation drug. In long agonist cycle, the patients start injections week before the menstrual cycle. So which is approximately on day 21 of previous cycle, um, patients start agonist drug. So normally the cycle gets uh, planned, registered in, in the beginning of previous cycle. And let us say if patient has 28 day cycle, the clinic says, okay, so on day 21 of your this month's of cycle, you do blood test and inform us. Then we, if blood test is fine, then we start agonist injections. So while patient in agonist injection, as you can see from this chart, approximately about a week after patient uh, has a period. So it can, this period may vary, it may be short or maybe longer, but we need to wait until patient has a period. Then once patient has a period, then we start um, stimulation drug. The patient does a blood test, then start stimulation drug. So then agonist should be continued until the trigger. So we should, once we down-regulated the pituitary, we should keep it down-regulated. So then uh, we start stimulation drug, FSH drug, um, patient has a monitoring, once ready for the trigger, have a trigger shot and stop agonist and his stimulation drug. So, and then third, uh, here we use a, um, different different type of medications can be used. Most commonly con used ones are decapeptal and scenario. Decapeptal is injection and scenario, which is a uh, nasal, um, nasal spray. So, um, the third type of uh, regime is uh, flare agonist. Like its name says, it is agonist drug, uh, which means we use decapeptal and, and, and scenario, for example, and it is uh, flare. And also second name for this cycle is short agonist. Let us say this is long agonist, and this is also called short agonist. So, which means that it is, of course, uh, shorter than long agonist. So, which means that um, this is very similar, it, the duration of this is similar to um, antagonist. So here we don't need to start before menstrual cycle. Patient waits for the menstrual cycle. When they have a period, um, they do some blood tests and then start um, agonist drug. So and uh, and once they started agonist drug, um, so they have to continue until trigger shot. And you can see from this chart, usually for a couple of days, patient doesn't need to use stimulation FSH drug when they're on flare agonist because. What happens here is like we said earlier, so when a patient takes agonist injection, all stored LH and FSH gets dumped into the bloodstream that gives a stimulation. So essentially we're using patients on stored LH and FSH for couple, first two days of stimulation. Why only a couple of days? Because this um, the stored FSH and LH um, will run out after a couple of days. So this is why we have to give patient um, additional stimulation drug after that. 
So, and uh, yeah, so then stimulation drug starts. Um, uh, so then stimulation drugs continue until trigger shot. Once the patient gets triggered, we stop both agonist and antagonist drugs. Like we said earlier, same agonist drugs used, like decapeptal and cinaril is used uh, in this cycle. Okay, so now last part of my presentation here, we have discussed uh, so pituitary down regulation is required for IVF treatment cycle to stop pituitary um, interfering with, with the cycle. Uh, second, uh, we know how we can achieve that using antagonist and agonist drugs. Now, third um, step of our presentation is how we decide which patient should use antagonist or agonist. So uh, typically, antagonist is most commonly used uh, regime because it's simpler, it reduces risk of ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. Um, so, and uh, yeah, so the antagonist gives the exact same chance or maybe even better chance in certain patients than the other, other, other um, uh, protocols. So antagonist is typically used as a standard, um, uh, standard um, regime. So, and especially in patients with a high ovarian reserve, uh, patients with PCOS, uh, we should use antagonists because these patients, younger patients, patients with PCOS are at risk of ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. So if you're using antagonist regime, if patient is having excessive high response, then you can use agonist trigger and do freeze off. So if you're using agonist for, for down regulation, you cannot use agonist trigger. So um, yeah, certainly if patients with PCOS and at high risk of PCOS, we should use antagonist. And the long agonist cycle, which was very popular before antagonist drugs were developed, um, so it, it is not used very often nowadays, uh, but it can be used in selected patients. For example, in patients with severe endometriosis, um, so agonist, uh, long agonist is, is believed to be, um, uh, gives slightly better outcome than, than antagonist, although the evidence is not very strong on that. So um, flare agonist also not, used very often, it can be used in selected patients and in patients who are, who are poor responders. Um, yeah, and uh, let us say, especially what I mean is selected is, uh, let us say if patient has a, um, um, patient surges through the, the cycle despite being an antagonist, if we, if we can't uh, completely block pituitary using antagonist drug for in future cycles, for example, we can use long agonist cycle. So. Yeah, so um, essentially, um, as we can have seen here, um, so uh, we use generic analog, um, uh, we use agonist or antagonist drugs to take a control over um, over function of pituitary gland so that we can um, we can have a um, streamlined ovarian uh, stimulation in IVF cycles. This is end of my presentation. Um, thanks, JC. So uh, yeah, I'm ready for the questions. Thank you so much, Doc, for that extensive presentation on, of course, uh, IVF cycle planning down regulation regime. Now, we will be throwing, I'll be throwing in a couple of questions. And also, for those who are watching right now, if they have messages, if you have messages or comments and, uh, you know, suggestions and questions, of course, please do throw it in in our social media pages where the live stream is being broadcasted. Or you can message us at uh, HTTP. Uh, Colin, double backslash rostomov.com.au. Now, Dr. Oybeck, here's my first question. Are there any other regimes for down regulation? Um, yeah, so the, the different variation of the same regime. So pretty much we use the same same drugs, agonist and antagonist drugs um, in different uh, variations. So, and also there's another regime called ultra long down regulation regime that's used in patients with severe endometriosis and adenomyosis. So these patients need a much longer down regulation, which lasts months in some patients, maybe last six months, three months before we start 
um, the, before we start IV cycle. Typically, these patients can stay on long acting agonist drug. It's called ultra long agonist cycle. And um, then they can start IVF treatment cycle while they're on that drug. So um, purpose of that is to re improve in implantation in patients with adenomyosis and endometriosis. Um, yeah, so the, the, these are these are the main uh, regimes. And then uh, in the different type of IVF cycles like uh, natural IVF, uh, natural cycle IVF, so uh, type cycles. So um, yeah, these regimes are used in uh, in most conventional IVF cycles. All right, Doc, thank you so much for that. Now, here's my next question to you. If patient misses injections for down regulation, can they still continue the cycle? Uh, yeah, good question. So um, yeah, patients should uh, immediately contact their clinic and discuss with them. Really depends on what kind of protocol they are, what drugs they're using, what dose, and how long it's been since they missed injections. So usually if uh, the period of missing injection is not very long, usually you can uh, continue. You can just get the injection quickly and, and continue and monitor blood to make sure that actually um, the surge has not happened um, while they missed the injection. So um, yeah, so the, 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 the best advice will be to contact the clinic immediately if they, if they miss the injection. <clears throat> All right. Thank you so much, Doc, for that insightful presentation. Again, for clarifications with regards to those questions. Now, again, Dr. Oybek, please do invite everybody once again of what they will look forward to as well. We will be doing the IVF series, not weekly anymore, but daily starting today. Yes. No, th thanks, JC. So, yeah, so we will be doing daily 4 p.m. Uh, Brisbane time. So will be like short 10 15 minute presentation so uh this week we will be covering cycle planning steps, um, the, and, and all the steps of cycle planning tomorrow we'll uh, discuss ovarian stimulation drugs and laws and each of these um, steps of cycle planning we we'll try and complete uh, this week uh, thanks for your time uh, thanks for joining the live stream i i, I wish you a great uh, evening and i will catch you next time thanks Jesse. thank you thank you doc Thank you so much, everyone. So again, disclaimer notice as well that different types of patients has different results and for more accurate diagnosis on your concerns, you may refer and consult with your respective GPs or physicians. Please join us again for another episode of IVF series daily live stream with Dr. Oybek Rastamov. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy the rest of the day.